include animal kills and carcasses. Viewer discretion is advised. Good morning, good morning, and welcome to the dawn here in Juma Private Game Reserve. My name is Steve, I'm joined over there by Mpo, and we are out and about in the thick of it to see what we can find this morning. Now we found male leopard tracks coming there, female leopard tracks coming here. Where have they gotten to? Don't forget everybody, this is a live and interactive game drive experience. Your questions and comments are valuable to us, so send them through using the hashtag Wild Earth on Twitter. Uh, throw them in on the YouTube chat stream or go to our app. You can ask your questions there. Now Cedric is down by the dam. He'll be joining us shortly and then we'll have Eric down in Amakala. But uh, we just found tracks of a male and a female. Very likely Tlalamba just by the area and very likely Morwati also by the area. But we've gone into this drainage line which makes things a little bit, a little bit tricky. Don't worry, we shall endeavour. We shall endeavor. You know, they love to come and check this open area. <clears throat> and the lack of impala on this open area is testament to the presence of a spotted cat or a lion, which I believe have been reported calling on the dam camp not so long ago, as well as a leopard soaring. Dark main lover, it's going to be a beautiful morning. It is a lovely overcast day. It's quite cool. I almost thought about getting my jacket this morning and then I decided, no, that's ridiculous. No jacket needed. Just going to go up here a little bit. See if we see any, any sign. And then I'm going to go down, down that way there. I can actually see the tracks quite clearly there in Port in the road. Let me position us nicely. The male leopard tracks haven't continued up here. The females tracks are coming straight down quite easy to see and if you is that all right you see that one yeah. and if you're not sure just put some form of measurement next to it you'll see the knife is 10 centimeters smaller than the knife in the soft sand definitely a female and she's going in that direction so just by the area and where she was last night, everybody, I would assume that this is the queen. We had her just down the way there. I'm just going to check up here. This sort of southern section. We shall do so. Okay, well it's an overcast kind of day, but let's go see what the weatherman has to say. Well, well, isn't this an amazing view to start this morning's sunrise safari? And uh, yes, I'm excited for this uh, new 
uh, drone that's uh, pretty much uh, hovering above uh, the vehicle. But yes, good morning everybody. My name is uh, Cedric and uh, behind the camera and the drone, we've got a panda. So thank you so much for uh, joining us this morning and I am excited to really get out here and go and follow up on this leopard that was calling around the dam. So let's get going. Oh, this is going to be an amazing, amazing safari. I am looking forward to this and uh, what a beautiful view that we do have from above. And it's always nice just to have a little bit of a different perspective on where we're going and actually looking at uh, the interesting, interesting, how can I say, the environment that we are driving in. Now, of course, what I'm doing now, I'm heading slowly towards uh, Gary Dam and just to see if we can pick up on anything that's out. I know Steve had leopard tracks where he is. Anna Marie, yes, it is Saturday, cat -a day, and I can't wait to see what we got in store for everybody this morning and this afternoon. But yes, let's go and take a look. All right, let's go. All right, so we are heading now towards uh, Gary Dam, and as I said, there we trying to follow up on a leopard that was uh, calling this uh, this morning, not too long ago. I know that Steve said he's got... Uh, well, Steve's got those leopard tracks that he's following up on, but I think maybe I'm going to take a look. I know that there was a leopard that crossed over the dam wall at about 2 o'clock this morning. But yeah, well, we are going to go and do that. Let's head over to uh, Eric, as he's got some cats for the morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. From the field of Amakala Private Game Reserve, Eastern Cape, South Africa. What a beautiful morning it is. Amazing, amazing. Hello, 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 welcome. My name is Eric, your naturalist for this morning, joined by Morgan, who's on camera for us. And we are your eyes and ears and uh, the eyes and ears have already found our first subjects amazing app our three amigos here most likely looking for a new meal how exciting is this now these two amigos i'm not too sure what they did throughout the night but it does look like they are ready to eat something they're looking around quite a lot uh, looking for the next prey item but wow what a way to start what a way to start yeah long way to Oh my goodness, it's, I'd forgotten that it was Saturday. Yes, happy cat today, happy cat today. What a great way to start the cat today, wow. Oh, these cats are gorgeous. They all seem to be staring in the same direction. I know. On our way here, we did pass a herd of red hartebeest, but that herd of red hartebeest is quite some distance round the, the corner. So they shouldn't, we, I can't see them from here. And I don't think they are able to see them. There's probably something else that they've got their eyes on. Oh, a decent sized flock of guinea fowl making a fair bit of racket down there. Maria, it is my pleasure. I was quite disappointed yesterday that we weren't able to find our female cheetah. And cheetahs are some of my favorite cats. So I had to come and look for these guys. And I'm very happy we managed to find them. 
didn't take too long. What is it that you want here? There's a flat, there's a bee. This is On Safari. Now remember, this is live and interactive, so we'd love to hear from you. To be having these incredible experiences in this wild underwater forest. It, it was just one of those things which I don't think I'll ever see again in my life. Thanks for joining us on our Sunrise Safari. It could be me, or it could be just the angle that his head is at, but he look a bit grumpy. Or is it hangry? Are you hangry? Is that the story? It possibly is that way. Oh, the sun is now starting to poke his head through and catching these guys beautifully with that light. Oh, the golden hour. Let it begin. Wow, wow. Yeah. And the more of the sun comes up, the brighter it becomes, the more golden. Oh, wee, that's a good light. Fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Have a look. Well, Morgan's just going to switch ND filters, so there may be uh, a change in color. Jamie, when we 
were coming along this road these guys were actually chasing a kudu but they didn't manage to catch it it escaped so that's pretty much how we saw them I think if it weren't for the kudu we may not have actually seen them there's these guys oh, oh. you saying you you struggling to see them I mean they the other two we can only just see the tops of their heads oh the other one has disappeared now Yo, if these guys don't want to be seen, they won't be seen. It's very simple. If they lie flat in the grass, they can lie flat in the grass about 10 meters away and uh, you won't see them. They're so slender. It's just part of the way that they built. They built for speed, not built for strength. So there's no need to, there's no use in being bulky. When you build for speed, you've got to be aerodynamic. Yes, Willie. Only thing they're missing now is a cup of coffee cup of coffee and the sunrise, what more? Or maybe even a meal, a cup of coffee and maybe a snack. Oh, are you gonna roll over? Oh, you see, you see that, <laughs> almost gone. Same. I wonder if maybe it was the chasing of that kudu that's taken all the energy out of them now because they look like they were wanting to get up and start moving. Liam, no. So a Makala has eight cheetah altogether, and we tried to find the other five yesterday, and uh, we came up a bit short. She was hiding, and uh, we were unable to see her and her little babies. But we haven't given up yet. We will be back there at some stage throughout this coming week and we will persist and we will find her so yeah we've got that lady and her four little cubs well not so much little almost sub adults and then we've got these three boys here so eight all together You can imagine it must be quite stressful for some animals when they're walking in the long grass and they don't see these cheetah and all of a sudden these cheetah jump up. You must get the fright of your life. But we're going to sit here and wait with these beautiful migos. We're going to send you up to Cedric who I believe is on a cat hunt of his own. Eric, that is fantastic. What a way to start a, a Saturday a morning cat today with uh, some uh, cheetahs there down in the Eastern Cape in Amakala. That is wonderful. All right, so what I'm busy doing now, we're going to just try and follow up on, we've also got leopard tracks coming up and down this side towards just uh, north of Gari Dam. As I said, there was a female leopard crossing over the dam wall about two o'clock this morning. So I'm just double checking if we can see if we can find uh, this uh, leopardess. Um, very difficult to say because it just seems like her tracks is all over and I know that uh, Steve's got her tracks as well going 
towards uh, the southern side of uh, quarantine, a big open clearing just south of our camp. But yeah, earlier on you did see we had a fantastic image of a view with the drone. You could see Rusty from uh, from the skies and uh, yes, and there was uh, somebody very special that was uh, sitting behind me on uh, Rusty. Well, she's still yeah. <laughs> so of course, uh, Trishala has uh, joined us on our drive this morning, which is fantastic. Always nice having her around. So yes. <laughs> A lot of pressure, a lot of eyes on me. Woo! <laughs> but yes, let's see if we can get the. Yes, to try. <laughs> so yeah, this is gonna be fantastic. So it's nice, uh, more eyes on the vehicles. So uh, hopefully, well, now we are uh, destined to find this uh, leopard this morning. So yeah. And hyenas. And hyenas. Of course, Shishola wants to see the hyenas. Well, Yesterday morning we had all the hyena action. I'm hoping this, this, this morning we can have the same luck. The same luck. Alright, so I'm not too sure what time the leopard was calling. Um, I don't know if uh, Gwen, can you give me an update on just the time of, of the audio from that leopardo? I don't know, maybe my comms is down. Ah, oh, there. Ah, five to six. Oh, it wasn't too long ago at all. Hmm. Oh, just got a lot of hyena tracks up and down here. All right, let's go. I think these, these are the hyenas from yesterday afternoon when uh, Steve followed the wild dogs going north into Biffles Hook. Because that's a property that's just north of us. Mindy, uh, it's very possible, very, very, very possible. I'm not gonna, can, I'm not gonna, how can I say, cancel that one out. Um, you know, it could be another female. So yeah, let's see, let's see if we can find this, uh, the cat, then we can say for sure. So it seems he's been very busy. But then again, as well, leopards can move up and down when they want to, and during the night time, she could have a, a great or huge area. All right, I'm going to come down on Vubu Road. Just want to double check on this road. Yeah. Hmm. And this block is very big. I know Marips and Tlalamba many a time followed them through this block. Uh, it's a very big block, very thick. Not an easy area to and get through as long as maybe she's sticking to the road yeah this is hyena tracks here loads of hyena tracks Out in the wild, life moves fast. To capture the action, you've got to be in the right spot at the wrong time. Now, incredible animal behavior, selected from amazing amateur and professional footage to reveal the secret lives of animals in motion. This is raw nature caught in the act.
Now, water sources are points of interest, and they are always good places to check. I mean, and listen, but I think that this is my wheel touching branches, and Paul, did you hear it as well? It's almost like a Franklin. <laughs> Alex, you love it when there's so many leopard tracks in Juma. We love it too, but uh, we also like it when, when we can find them. We love being able to find them, but it doesn't mean that we can't find them. It just means sometimes, sometimes it's difficult. If they go into those drainage lines, we don't really have the time to get off and go and scratch around in there for too long. But um, we will do our best. We will do our best. Point of call, tree our stab, and then we'll take it from there. All right, so we got some elephants. I'm trying to get just uh, around here and we'll see if we can get a nice view of them. I don't want to see if it's a little pathway for us. So far, so good, I think. All right, let's stop here. Let's see. Good. Um, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. One of the youngsters here in the herd. There's around about maybe five, six, seven of them. Always oh, nice to have elephants. You never get tired of these beautiful mammals. Oh, he's doing. Maybe they're going to do a little bit of a. And number two there. Oh. It's, there we go. I was feeling a little bit sore there for him. Um, there's also a beautiful female here, but she's just behind the bush now. But she's got stunning, stunning uh, tusks on her. It's a beautiful set of uh, tusks. I'm hoping that she does come out very shortly. I'm slowly now making the way a little bit further south. Maybe it'll end up at uh, the dam and during the morning. But for now, as you know, elephants try and feed as much as possible most of the day. We can feed about 80-85% of their day. They'll be just feeding on all different things. Brian, yeah, they all came to say hello, but now I'm just, no, they came to say hello, but then one just disappeared. Okay, let's see, Brandon, let's see if we can just uh, sneak through here and see if we can get a better view. All right, there's a big log here. Just watch your side there, Panda. All right, so I'm bringing the entire log with me now. All right, that's not going to happen. All right, let's see if we can get out here. All right, we're not going to try and carry on chasing them this side. I think I'm going to rather just leave them. I thought we might get a nice little gap here, but that's not happening. So. Right there, Pando. Yep. A little bit of a workout for the morning. But yeah, no, I'm not going to carry on here. The grass is very thick here, so you never you can't see really the logs that's sitting in the grass. Oh, well, at least Eric has got some uh, cheetahs, so let's head over to Eric. Thank you, thank you, Cedric. I hope you come right with your animals. We're still sitting here with our 
beautiful cheetah <laughs> they've actually just gone completely flat now this is what I was talking about a bit earlier they're not very far away from us I'd say they're about 20 meters no, 20, 25 meters maximum and we're struggling to see them are they still there? they are still there there's a little bit of one it's right in the middle of the screen uh, what part of the body are we looking at there? I think it's, you can see just the top of his ears and I think that's a little bit of a snout but <laughs> very very camouflaged now this is very good for their own safety but it's also very good for when they just want to disappear be anonymous to the other animals other animals will walk past this Often not even knowing that they're there if the cheetahs didn't wake up. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of movement. Flick of the ear. <laughs> wow. Liam, what a very clever question. Uh, cheetahs are diurnal animals, but I did read an, read an article, uh, I think it was up in the Maasai Mara, where there was a group, I think it was either three or four, maybe, no, I think it was four, four male cheetahs that actually got used to hunting throughout the night time so they used to take down prey but at this time this was also during a full moon but most of the time cheetahs are hunters throughout the day and active throughout the day where they sleep at night time I can just see a few little spots over there and uh, at the very top the inside of an ear so that would mean he is facing away from us so his backside is closest to us and I'm assuming that would be the spots that we see on the rump and part of the back leg This is also an, an animal that is heavily, heavily endangered. I was, <laughs> was it fair? I was just about to talk about it. Yes, so the cheetah is the only cat. Well, not the only cat. Lions are very nearly getting there. But at the moment, as it stands, the cheetah are the most endangered wild big cat that we have here. Uh, lions are slowly it's surely getting there but just due to the exotic pet trade cheetahs the numbers in the wild are not the same as what they used to be and that is why that is why it was so important when one of these amigos managed to injure himself it was very important that we get him back on his feet and I'm very glad that he had healed up very very well and almost to the point where you we don't actually know which one is injured now because there are all three of them walking incredibly well there is no limping and even if there is it's a minor minor limp but uh, we need these boys to be 100% as uh, it's possible one of them may be doing some breeding soon or maybe not soon but in the future
And a uh, pretty interesting fact when it comes to males, male cheetahs and when they mate is a female can mate with multiple male cheetahs and can father multiple uh, um, uh, multiple cheetah males can father multiple cubs from the same litter. So in other words, she could mate with all three Say, for instance, our female cheetah mated with all three of these males. All three of these males could possibly have a cub that come from that litter with his DNA in it. And the same is with leopards as well, although you don't normally find multiple, uh, a female mating with multiple leopards. As there should generally only be one male in a territory, and male uh, leopards don't form coalitions. Whereas this is a coalition, so there's obviously more than one male in this area. Oh, very sleepy. Well, welcome back everybody. Welcome back live. Well, we've gone back to where we had the last tracks of the female um, and she sort of disappeared into this block coming from that side, from the western side of quarantine area and uh, we've just found where the male came out of the block heading in the other way. So they both sort of transitioned on that side and then they both peeled off going opposite directions. So very interesting. Oh, hang on. The female going this way now as well. Male up and down, female up and down. Just got to have a little look on the ground. Male is going in both directions and suddenly the female's track is here as well. Hmm. 
Always nice to look at these little sandy sandy patch areas. Get a bit more of an understanding of what's happening. Nothing there. Hmm, these leopards are going to leave us scratching our heads this morning. So just at that mitre drain there, the male came out and up. And uh, now he's going back. And there's the female as well. So, but she's turned the other way. Maybe if we just keep going up here, we'll be lucky. Maybe Mawati and Columba are revisiting each other. The last mating not being successful. What a show they put us on last time. Tracking experience. Now, what I hear now is the very typical alarm call of a Franklin that's seen a spotty. That's just. Pamela, Estrus. They come into Estrus monthly and they'll mate a period of four or five days and then they go out of Estrus depending on how whether the fertilization takes place or not she'll come back into Estrus. Can you hear this? This is the typical alarm call of a Franklin that's seen something it didn't want to see. Now you're being very quiet. Very quiet. Yes, we know there were leopards here. We know there were. But where are they? Where are they? Bobby Blue, I think you're right. So we can just see the western side of quarantine there, the road that both of them met on at some point. And then the drainage just between us, and there's a very interesting area. But it's the perfect habitat. I'm not hearing anything else. I reckon those cats were were close by not long ago. I think we're gonna continue back to the road. Have a little look here if we see anything. If it is Mawati, I'm only assuming everybody just by excuse me, by the route that he's taken. Now who was calling on the dam camp? Someone heard leopard calling around the dam camp. I don't think it's either of these two. You know, I'm assuming it's Tlalamba, I'm assuming it's Mawati. I can't tell you for sure it's a male and a female. That's all I know. <clears throat> Okay, while well, we hear the calls of the African Grey Hornbill, 
Let's see if we can figure out what's going on. Let's send you over to Cedric and see how he's getting along if he's managed to relocate to any tracks. Thank you, uh, Steve, and yeah, good luck on the tracks. Well, we also still got a, f uh, a female uh, tracks that's heading in an easterly direction on the road that we're currently on now, and it's called the Central. So we're still going to try and follow up on these tracks. Well, you never know, might be another female somewhere, but uh, we will double check on that. But yeah, this is fantastic. Beautiful view from above, so you can see the landscape exactly where and how it looks. And uh, no, well, still going east. Let's see, let's, let's cross fingers that uh, we do bump into this leopardess uh, very soon. Uh, looking up on every single tree, under every single bush. It feels like Steve and, uh, and myself, we are hot on uh, the tails. Anna Lee, uh, we're all holding thumbs uh, and as you can see we are driving on this beautiful road now and slowly still going east, still got the tracks still going east as well so I just want to make sure that I'm not going to miss uh, uh, this Leopardo. Ooh. All right, so we got a, just going to quickly cross over because we've just bumped into an elephant this side and you can see a nice male elephant that's just moving away now he's, yeah, he's slowly heading into thicker stuff come on my boy where are you now no nope, he doesn't want to come out and show face all right uh, panda what do you think all right, I'm gonna see. All right, we're just gonna cross over. You can just see exactly the landscape. Now you can see all the animal pathways that goes through the bushes. So of course, many times you get closer to the dams, the more prominent, prominent those pathways will be. And you can see big above a big marula tree. And then, I just wanna see. That elephant might be around here somewhere. Maybe we can see it from high above. Charlotte, it is amazing. It is, uh, gives you a whole different pers uh, perspective on uh, the area that we're in. And, um, you know, and a beautiful view on exactly how it looks. Isn't this uh, beautiful? You can see, as I say, look at all those animal pathways right there. You can, you can actually see the elephant slowly moving into a distance that side. Exactly. There goes the elephant, slowly moving away. Uh, the person that's controlling the drone at the moment is none other than Panda. He is a man with many, many talents. You can see that elephant slowly. There's a lonely, a lone bull. Oh, looks like he's moved away. All right, we're going to continue trying to follow up on this uh, uh, leopard tracks, uh, Panda. All right, let's cross over back to where we, back to our rusty itself. And hello, there we go. Let's go. Let's move on. Let's move on. Maybe we're going to go to Biffleswick Dam. I think that's going to be a, gu a good uh, like it's an opportunity to go and take a look around that side. The way she's going, I think maybe that'll be a good place to go and do a little bit of a, a scratch around.
we've got a head up and as that head goes down it's hiding now <laughs> oh goodness as that head went down another one went up <laughs> now you see that line just in behind the nose those are sunglasses for them in a sense it's to help with the glare of the sunlight to help prevent it from causing too much trouble when they are hunting and we spoke about them hunting during the day being diurnal hunters I'm going to go back to a question. I believe it was Liam, he's 10 years old. He asked, are cheetahs diurnal or nocturnal hunters? And I gave him an answer that I knew of five. I thought it was four, but it actually is five cheetahs in Kenya called the Bora Tano tribe. And these five male cheetahs used to do quite a fair bit of hunting throughout the throughout the night. Oh, thank you for that, Liam. Um, unfortunately, only two males here, so they're not going to be as strong. And when you have such numbers on your side you know the the size of the prey that you can go to for changes immediately you know something like a, a zebra is not so much impossible anymore you know something like a fully grown black wildebeest or fully grown blue wildebeest which is actually bigger and obviously the bigger the bigger the animal the more food that they can consume. So it's in their best interest really to form coalitions. And they do. Most of the mostly coalitions are formed when brothers from the same litter stay together. But it's not always like that. As you can sometimes find males who've come from two different litters joining together not disagreeing with each other and actually forming a relationship and once the bond is formed it becomes stronger and stronger and strong almost inseparable oh hello there we go someone up Apologies, there's a car coming past. Chris, um, female cheetahs prefer to do everything by themselves. They do not like seeing other females in their area at all. At all. They will chase them away. Look how beautiful this boy is. Oh my goodness. Good morning, good morning. Ooh, he's looking right at the camera. Hello, hello. Let's see if you're curious about his surroundings and Wow. The light is catching him absolutely amazingly. But yeah, going back to the female cheetahs, they do not tolerate other females in their area. And um, uh, if a female, she, her litter, if her cubs, once her cubs get to that age where she actually starts trying to leave them and get them to be by themselves and solitary, you'll actually find that she will chase away her, 
her daughters or her daughter. She will chase her away and ensure that she goes in search of another territory away from her or a home range, as a sense. Because females don't really have territories, they have more home ranges, whereas males have territories which they mark out. Oh, you are beautiful. You know that. You're gorgeous. He's having a good look around. looking for the animals oh I do see some animals now it, it may be a bit too far away for the camera to see but there are some red heart bears that these boys are looking at On the silhouette over there, we have a herd of red hartebeest who are in imminent danger. And it seems like they are moving on the top of that mountain. Where they are now is still a safe distance. These cheetah boys have got to do a lot of work in order to get up to there. And it's not necessarily the easiest to get up as it is all out in the open. Mm, they've got also an elevation point so they can see down on these cheetah boys so they may have the upper hand pun intended <laughs> um, but uh, it's possible maybe one of them is in these cheetahs are sitting down and red hearted bears don't have the worst eyesight ever so it's possible they may have been spotted by one Very interested as to what's behind them. It's always good to look at you, to watch your back. Oh, look at that. We're going to sit here a little bit longer. We we'll send you over to Steve to have a look what he's got with him. Lilac breasted roller feathers, pain of death. Cover himself in diamond. <laughs> I'll come back everybody. Just telling uh, interesting stories to him poor there, which had nothing to do with mongooses. We've got a little family of mongoose here, and I don't seem to be getting communications through. A little dwarf mongoose family. Now, I've been scratching around still, tracks of that male and female. I didn't really see an area where it looked like they'd interacted directly. It possibly might be just following each other. It's because of the noise that they make. There's a lovely little termite mound burrow they've got. And there's a, a few little cheeky ones on the right jump. Or can you see them? Little cheeky ones, hello. They've probably come out of another little burrow here that's connected. Oh, let's go back. Bolt hole one. They are so cool. Love to be able to just follow a group of them around. To be a wonderful little addition. Just with a little camera. 
spend all day with a group of mongoose. Get them nicely habituated. A little bit of rough and tumble happening there. This sort of time of day as they start to emerge from the burrows. Time for grooming. Time for a bit of social interaction. Okay, nice to spend another moment with the mongoose. Oh, we can also see if we can figure out where this male and female leopard have gotten to. In the meantime, let's go see how Cedric's getting on. Thanks, uh, Steve O's. Yes, we made our way towards the um, northeastern corner of Ajuma, the beautiful dam called Biffleshook Dam. And we've got two beautiful male Nialas. As you can see, the one was actually just busy putting its horn into the sand now. Sometimes what they do is just to kind of strengthen their horns. And this has to show dominance. Oh, there's a third one. All right, well, we've got three male Nialas. So like a little bachelor herd. Those are just sticking together just to make sure that, uh, you know, they've got a little bit of safety around here. Instead of having just one set of eyes, we've got three set of eyes. And ears and nose as well. But aren't they beautiful? This is my favorite, favorite antelope. I absolutely love them too. But so this one's also doing the same. Also, just to strengthen the outer case of the horn, the keratin, because when they start rubbing it against the branches, digging up mud with their horns, it just really strengthens. The horns itself. Oh, I've got a bit of a fright. This is just stunning. A little green black heron that's just in the water in front of it. Oh, gave them a fright. <laughs> and I love they've got those stunning socks on them, almost like they, those long light brown socks and the real dark chocolate bodies and then the females very much a contrast to a male they got pretty much the lighter colors i don't see any females at the moment it's just the boys it's very possible that there might be maybe further in the thickets Oh, regular Marie Kuna, I really, really do appreciate it. You say, well, I always make you smile and remind me, remind me of uh, your as well. I remember that. I remember the kids' show. That was fantastic. Of course, we had, I think we had Marips that day, that young male leopard that was up in a tree during the kids' show. And it was nice just to hear another name. It's the same as mine. Yes, it was wonderful. And I'm glad that you're still, oh, I'm glad that you're still enjoying Wild Earth. It's always amazing that we can still view all these amazing animals around you. I absolutely love it. And I love this dam. I haven't been to this dam since I've been back. So it's good just to be here. Coming to the northeastern corner. I thought maybe that female leopard might have come this side. But unfortunately, it doesn't look like there's any luck with that leopardess this side. Catherine, yes, they are beautiful. 
You know, just beautiful antelope, and I love those white stripes, almost like somebody's thrown paint on top of their spine, white paint, and then it started to trickle down on their flanks. Very peaceful scene here at Biffleswick Dam. I wonder if there's any of those uh, goslings around here. I just want to see if we can find them. Oh, I see the, I see the, oh, there they are. I think they're, they're that side. Let's just double check on them there. I think I see one little one that's still around there. Let's get Binox out. Yeah, I got the one. Oh, it's just the one. Did you see the one, eh, Panda? We are bringing you a new and improved fan favorite. We have unearthed the finest gems from over the years in our archives to give you hours of amazing entertainment. Hop on the largest safari vehicle in the world and revisit the best of Wild Earth with epic moments from eco-training pride lands, memories from Madikwe, and more. Reconnect with your favorite naturalists and animal characters with the best of safari life. Wild Earth, connecting with nature. And we never get to really see these great acres. They are so, so skittish. And uh, because I think it's on the other side of the dam, it feels very, it feels a little bit more comfortable that side and us being this side. So he's not running off. Oh, there's this. It's a little bit jittery. But yes, if you want to join uh, us on our mission just to showcase these beautiful African animals to the rest of the world and bring. Uh, nature to the world well please go on to our wild earth website it is wildearth.tv and just go click on the donate link or a button to get more information on how to join us and keep these wheels turning
So we are somewhat up now <clears throat> and uh, looking around I heard a red heart of yours have not moved away maybe moved a little bit closer but not by any large margin quite funny to see these heads just sitting in the grass you can't really see the rest of the body so it's just the neck a little bit of a neck that just fades off into the grass and then a head at the top of the neck with some cute little ears ah oh, it's too tiring to hold my head up I must put it down Another snooze. These guys have been snoozing their alarms. And now they are all three lying flat. It's a no. So when breeding time does come, it's possible one might breed. They may they may even fight with each other for breeding rights. But ultimately, all three of them can possibly mate with the same female. Um, it all depends on how they want to go about it. It all depends on who feels they are the most dominant or have the most hierarchy in a sense but I think at this point it, it, it they do seem to be equal in a sense or at least only two of them tend to kind of be a bit dominant as you know you normally see one of those two is the first one to move off and then there's always one that hangs back or hangs around and I'm not too sure if that's the one that was injured and is just used to being kind of the slow one or if it actually just is one that just feels I'm gonna not really step back but I'm not going to be in charge of where we go in a sense the navigator but more than likely all three of them will mate with the female little flick of the tail It's a proof of life, still alive. Very tired. I wonder what they were doing. And they are so tired. We're going to sit here a little bit longer and we will send you up to Cedric. Thank you, Eric. Look what has landed here on a dead branch. It's a Malachite King Fisher. Isn't this so, so sweet? One of the smallest kingfishers that we do have here in the area. It is so beautiful. I just want to double check on something here. Because this one hasn't got now the typical 
a red beak that you'll f find on them. I just want to see. Yeah, let's see. It's a juvenile. Eh? So this is a, a juvenile Malachi kingfish because uh, the adult has got that stunning red beak, where the juvenile still got the blackish beak. So this is still a youngster, not a fully grown one. Almost thought it might have been a um, what do you call it, a half colored uh, kingfisher, but it's not a half colored. A half colored kingfisher will have an entire blue blue head. And this one's only got the blue that's situated right on the top. But isn't this beautiful? Of course, catching a little fish, using it as a, like a little perch. And if there's a little tilapias, that'll be swimming close to the surface and then this little kingfisher will dive into the water and grabbing the fish from the water. This is just amazing. Almost doubted myself there. I thought no mate, it might, might have been half got it, but yeah as I said it is definitely a malachite kingfisher juvenile. And now it's around about between 10 to 15 centimeters large. Bobby Blue, you say it's a new bird to your wild earth bird list. Well, Bobby Blue, that is fantastic. Tick it off. Tick that one off. I always love finding, looking for them. And usually there's one that uh, sometimes comes around to Twin Dams, another dam to the southern side of uh, Juma. I get to see that one now and again, not often, not often at all. Oh, it's nice to see this one here at the Biffleshook Dam. I'll hang around at the dams for a while, for a few, maybe a week, like a few days or a week in it, and then they'll move to another dam, so they won't, all, they won't just spend the entire time at one specific dam or water hole. But also I think why we don't see them that often, I mean they're so small and they usually always tuck themselves in between the reeds or in like a little dead tree like this now. They're very difficult. And you can see that little white, beautiful white on the neck itself. Oh there it goes, you see that? Oh. <laughs> it happened quick, eh, uh, Panda. Yeah, uh, very quick. You can see it diving into the water. Sorry, there's just another vehicle. There's just another vehicle here at the moment, and I think they want to come across the dam wall, so I'll have to maybe start moving very shortly. There it is now. Yeah, now it's actually nicely. Now you can see the beautiful rusty color on the chest area. With a nice little white bit under the beak. Isn't that stunning, hey? Eh? This is On Safari. In this particular case, it looks like he's made a coalition with his sons. I'm sure this afternoon is going to be a fantastic drive, as always. Now remember, this is live and interactive, so we'd love to hear from you.
a decent sized herd of red heart to beast. There's no shortage of bodies there. Good grief, it's fairly large. I'd say there's probably about 30 of them there. 30 and it looks like three black wildebeest at the very, very back. And uh, they are moving towards a waterhole, I would imagine. They've come from an area where there wasn't one, but the, the direction that they're going to is generally where there is a big-ish pan, where, I mean, even if they wanted to swim, they can swim in there. I don't think that they will. You don't normally find antelope rolling in mud or subjecting themselves to water unless they are the water buck. Welcome back live everyone. We have finally found an animal. The family of Kuru are going to disappear into the thickets in a moment. We've had leopard tracks all over the place now. The male leopard tracks were heading south, south and west. We've checked our southern boundary. They don't seem to have crossed out. They looked very, very fresh. I really can't tell you everybody. We do do our best to track these animals. But as I've said before, disclaimer, I am no expert tracker. So what are we going to do? At Mpaw's suggestion, because uh, I asked him at the junction which way should we go. He said right. So right takes us to Treehouse. Mati. Mati is a, means water or manzi. Treehouse water. That's what the Talamati means, the place of water. You heard the name, the Talamatis. I'm right, eh, Paul? Tala. Tala. Four. Four. Chela is the poor, eh? Tala. Anyway, not my, not my first language, but I believe it means to come from the place of water, but or the pouring of water, as the poor is saying. We shall check the treehouse water in a moment. As it is the central point which would anchor all of these leopard tracks together. <laughs> Cynthia, Cedric's dam of plenty. Hopefully we'll find us something. Hopefully you'll find us some. There's been a number of elephant tracks as well this morning, but they have been invisible. Oh, we had our little dwarf mongoose family, so we did actually have some animals. My bad. Are you ready for it? Here comes Treehouse, Marty. And it's full glory. And three, two, one. Ah. Exhale. Happy Saturday, everybody. 24th of February in case you weren't sure I hope you're all enjoying your sleep in if you're a nine to five work work worker enjoying your nice early morning late morning now on a Saturday
goes to show how different mornings can be out here. We can have dramatic mornings where the content is practically falling out of the trees. The comms are breaking up there, Gwen. I'm not hearing you. And then you can get mornings like this where there's tracks all over the place, but we're always just one step behind. The woodland kingfisher laughing. Cedric's got some. Uh, Leopard tracks on top of his vehicle tracks. We've both got tracks all over the place. Southern black tits calling as well. Well, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to get that bird that's flying now. It's a bit tricky. Paradise wider. Or is that a bird carrying some grass? Long-tailed paradise wide. It's a bit tricky to get at this light. seem to be having some difficulties with our communication this morning. I can hear Gwen is trying to talk to me. We've moved away from our three amigos as uh, they were definitely not going to go anywhere else. And we thought we would go in search of some other animals. So we're just sitting here in a beautiful elevation point and uh, just overlooking this little valley that we have been in. Now we haven't moved very far away from where we saw those three amigos and right in front of us is that kind of part of the slope where we saw the that herd of red heart appears before we saw the omega so they actually moved a fair distance i'd say they moved uh, probably about 
just under 2 k's, 2 kilometers max max kilometer uh, uh, yeah, I'd say a max 2 kilometers, maybe a kilometer and a half that's how far they'd done some grazing and uh, now this is pretty much this area majority of this part of the reserve looks like this so it's kind of these open fields with these rolling hills very little shrubbery and if there is shrubbery most of it's actually at the top of the hill on the flatter surfaces and it's actually quite nice it's a bit of a change and from the thick thicket the forest thicket that you get when we pass through some of the main reserve areas dark maned lover um, hyenas for one, hyenas are very active hunters and they are the king of mobbing or the kings of mobbing um, we feel that Amakala is not big enough to hold brown, sorry, to hold the spotted hyenas as well as our lions we feel like there will be too much conflict constantly biting each other's tails as well as those of the prey that they take down and we think that it's just going to be there will be far too many carcasses lying around uh, wild dogs as well you know we, it, it may be kind of chaotic with all the what with the wild dogs the cheetah and the lions it can possibly get a bit too much for our not so not so small but not so big reserve and wild dogs are you know formidable hunters and we think our prey species would just not cease to exist but struggle struggle to keep their numbers and that's why we don't really have any wild dogs or spotted hyenas we would love to be able to have them no doubt but just due to our ecological status of the reserve we'd prefer not to cause too much damage here oh, it is an amazing morning even though it's part, partly cloudy, every now and then we lose a bit of sunlight due to a cloud hiding behind it. Bless you, Morgan. Thank you. Um, <laughs> but uh, other than that, it is a pleasant morning. Oh, Crafty Jacks, indeed it is lovely to wake up, to go out into the wilderness and just be able to sit and enjoy a specific view, a bit of scenery, some animals, just being out here is incredible. I can't hear very many birds out here. You, know, you don't normally find too many of our feathered friends out in the open. Something you'd find out here, and uh, we've seen quite a fair bit of them, is actually the denims busted. Your puppets, your long claws, your 
chat, so yo, more specifically the ant eating chat. On safari. Now remember, this is live and interactive, so we'd love to hear from you. To be having these incredible experiences in this wild underwater forest. It, it was just one of those things which I don't think I'll ever see again in my life. Thanks for joining us on our sunrise safari. Pardo, as I said, his tracks are so so fresh. Well, it was from about maybe a, a few moments ago, as it is on top of our vehicle track. So it might still be, it might be in the drainage line, maybe in the drainage line. Yeah, just towards uh, a road called Gary Cut Line. So let's amble very slowly along this road. No more white if he sees us he'll just go low. He'll just lay very very low knowing him. Uh Debbie no what Lumbo could be mating maybe even with the male to the south and go Botswana or she can go mate with the yeah, male yeah, to the west. To the west and uh, yeah so no it's got other options. But she's already mated with uh, Mawati, unless she did not take and then now she has to mate again and then that's why they're trying to look for each other. Very possible. Hmm. And the grass is still so, so, so high at the side. Um, he does uh, lay low. He can drive right past without even knowing that he's there.
Uh, Jamie, uh, of course. Why seeing my rips again? I think we all would, be, would love that to happen. I oh, mean, just to see him grow. Getting bigger and bigger, getting to a proper adult size. It's amazing how quickly they grow. So I'm just trying to go here very slowly because, as I say, I don't want to miss anything and uh, you never know. Maybe she might even, that female might have made a kill yeah, made him turn because he came from the south, he went north with his tracks because um, uh, Steve had his tracks coming up this side towards quarantine and across to the north and he came up towards Biffleshook boundary, that's to the northern area of uh, Juma and it looks like at one stage it looked like he was almost like running there and then he came south onto Gary Cut Line. So clearly something grabbed his attention and he changed direction. Unless he's still in that drainage line somewhere but yeah, it's, it's pointless going in there because it's just so thick and as well if it's more whitey uh, it's, it's no use trying to chase after him. Kelly, uh, now they're playing a lot of hiding and uh, I didn't seek with us this, uh, this morning. We're just not, uh, we are so close to them. We're so, 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 so close, but uh, yeah. you know, if a leopard wants to be seen, it'll be seen. If it doesn't want to be seen, it is gonna avoid us. Hey, Panda. Uh, the worst thing is the, the worst thing is when you know when you see the tracks on top of your vehicle tracks that that's when like oh you know you've missed that leopard just 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 and uh, yeah and that's how I feel now I'm actually just go to the last tracks and just quickly jump off and just double check Well, at least uh, Eric got those three amigos this morning, so he's got the cheetahs. So at least he had some uh, luck. That is nice. Very, very nice. And then if he still got those three male cheetahs. Alright, well we're going to try and get to the last tracks quickly just to see if we get any luck with this uh, leopard. While we do that, I think let's head over to Steve to see if he's had any luck. No luck setters, no luck at all. You and I are both just scratching our heads this morning. Well everybody, it's, it happens like that. We don't have the tracks crossing out so it means that invariably the animals should be here don't you think invariably now we're back to where I mean here is a very nice example I'm not sure uh, Paul you're not gonna be able to see that with the light at all let's try let's try we came back to where we found the male and female leopard tracks earlier coming out of this drainage line here is the female's track and here is the male's track much different in size female track is smaller than knife male track is both directions the same size
<laughs> Just up here is where we had those Franklin's alarm calling and I feel like this female is probably behind him um, and he's carried on because those trucks we found down on the south were, were much fresher than these. I mean, it might be a different animal altogether. Uh, probably unlikely though. You know, up ahead here is a typical route where Mawati will cut through and end up on Fulhamon's dip, uh, Fulhamon's cut line. Could you see those tracks, Paul? Uh, uh, so. A little bit. A little bit. Calvin, generally you find a male or female leopard and you can tell if it's a fully mature cat by the size of the track. But um, some animals that directly register, you can actually work out their, their body shape and size. For, a, for example, a kudu bushbuck or nyala can actually draw a picture of them in the sand. Okay, so we've got some birds going crazy here. Not a great morning to spot the birds though. But this is right where we had our Franklin's alarm calling. So I'm just going to switch off here. See if we can hear this bird party. White crested helmet shrikes. Very noisy. Sounds like they are alarm calling. Very likely could be for a, an owl or a snake though. Sounds like crickets, says Gwen. It's a, very, it's a bull snapping that we're hearing. Oh, there's some begging happening there on the floor there. Let me just move up to that a touch and you might be able to see them. They're all missioning around quite low in the canopy there. Paul, can you see them? You good? Yeah. White crested helmet shrikes. And I think there might be some juveniles actually that are following the adults that are begging. Yes, there's a juvenile there. It's making the noise. You'll notice the white crested helmet shrike adult has got a very white head and it's got the yellow wattle on the eye where a couple of these are youngsters. They don't quite yet have the wattle. They're on the left. And it's going, give me food, give me food. So it's not an alarm call. It's a begging display. Come on, mom. Come on, you, the whole lot of you. You should be feeding me non-stop. How special. <clears throat> Now we have been following up on the white crested helmet truck nest on the southern boundary but that is what one of the youngsters looks like that has already fledged from the nest. Out in the wild, life moves fast. To capture the action, you've got to be in the right spot at the wrong time. Now, incredible animal behavior, selected from amazing amateur and professional footage to reveal the secret lives of animals in motion. This is raw nature caught in the act.
Look at what we have here. Pretty, pretty animals. I've got a herd of zebra. Plains zebra. Opposed to the mountain zebra, the other species of zebra that we have. And these ones are a little bit bigger. Very, very much like horses, although they have less legs than horses and more weight, more body. So these guys are slightly rounder than a horse, and a horse is slightly taller. There's a fair amount of zebra here. It's a decent sized herd. I don't think it's all one big herd. I think it's a couple of family groups here. There's even a little baby there. You can just see his head. And now he's gone. <laughs> Someone's backed up. No, move forward. Move forward. We're trying to look at the baby. Oh, there's another little baby. And a warthog with his nose in the air. He's obviously, the wind is blowing from us to them. And that warthog is just trying to figure out what's going on here. Why do I smell people? A little wary of us. Hasn't moved closer since. There's a sniff. A sniff sniff. Be <laughs> these people. Look at that cute thing. Adorable. Is that mom? Oh, that don't look like mom. That wasn't very nice. I don't think that's the foal's mother. I saw instantly as soon as that female came up behind that foal, the foal started moving away as if it was scared of that particular female. And then that little kind of, I want to nip you kind of act, that wasn't very nice at all. And that's typical, typical behavior of zebra. The nipping and the occasional thing, it happens. Sure, look at the vein on this lady's stomach. How big is that? Goodness. Oh, she heard me talking about it. Sam, their manes for us. Their manes are really just for appeal, just to look pretty. It's basically like the the hair on the back of a horse, horse's neck. It's like the hair on top of a kudu's, on top of a kudu's neck and the bottom. It doesn't really have much of a function. That the males will try and keep their manes as pretty as possible. As white as possible. Hmm. This one has not stopped looking at us. Willow. Uh, yes, yes they do. Um, 
So you'll generally find that foals of zebra will be born in between the month of October and the month of January. So generally smack bang in the middle of December, end of September. No, not September, the end of November. November is sort of it's the time of the time of the year where you'll see the mares at their biggest their bulging bellies but most of the time it's actually like an early December they give birth when it's nice and warm that's the most important thing really is they don't want their foals to have to deal with the cold cold winter And it does. I mean, it gets really cold down here in some in some places. I know that last year, here, the coldest temperature we had was minus two. And we only had that once. Most of it, the time, it was one degrees, two degrees outside. But on that one really, really cold day, it got down to minus two. Yeah, we're really getting the, the the stink eye here. Not impressed. <laughs> well, now we've got uh, two of them giving us a bit of a. A look down. We've done nothing. We're just sitting here. You were feeding when we arrived. Both of you were actually feeding when we arrived. You've only now looked at us, now that we've been here for more than five minutes. Oh, the, the stripes are really beautiful. If you look at the two of them, you can really see that they are not the same. Look at the one on the on the, on the right. Her, stri her stripes are all kind of attached, like rings, like necklaces. And then you look at the one on the left, and her stripes a little bit more different. You know, almost there's like a there's there's a spot there, not even a stripe. These Amakala zebras have a bit of sass to them, a bit of character, and nothing like a bit of character, you know. Character is always good, especially in a, an environment like this, you know. Quite often people don't think animals are possible or have the capabilities of having character or personalities, but they really do. You know, and more so wild animals than domesticated animals. Oh my goodness. For example, a baby Ellie. They have more attitude than most animals put together. These zebras, oh my goodness. It's like we've stolen something of theirs. Mm -hmm. The one has given up. Decided to move on. And even prettier stripes on the rump there. Oh, goodness. Almost like a zigzag. No, had enough now? Okay. All right. Yo, that's a mango monkey. Grant, goodness, some mango monkeys I've, I've seen. Yes, definitely. They've they've got attitude. They've got attitude. They've got sass. And <laughs> they have the potential to be very dangerous. Got a fork-tailed drongo. 
sitting on the back of one of those zebras, or it was sitting on the back. It's now sitting on the back of another one. Basically, what he's doing here, or she's doing here, is she's just doing a bit of a clean up. Uh, uh, insect. What's the word? An insect uh, a cleaning up. As uh, these zebra move through the grasses, there'll be definitely all sorts of bugs that they may step on or may brush off a bush. There may also be bugs on them, actually. I'm pretty sure we can count on the bugs being on them. And uh, that forktail dog is just there to help clean up them and fill his belly. As insects generally tend to, well, flies you'll find almost always around wild animals. And uh, there's generally, if you've walked five meters and you've not seen something fly out within the grass, you are most likely in a dead zone. Here there's always something to eat, especially on the insect front, there's always something in some of these clumps of grasses and sh shrubs. There's another group of zebra at the top there. And it looks like I saw a set of horns there. There's a set of horns. Bless Buck. If you are a driven nature enthusiast with a background in communications, then this message is for you. Wild Earth is calling for volunteers to moderate our web and social media chat platforms during our live broadcasts. Do you keep up with the latest trends on social media? Do you have quick fingers and a sharp eye? Then we're looking for you. To apply, email your CV to us at jobs at wildearth.tv. Join the Wild Earth team today. Wild Earth, connecting with nature. Jump up here and go look this side. I'm not too far from them now. Hmm. 
And the problem is we have to use second gear. You know, second gear is the main gear for you know ambling along. And uh, well, second gear is not working. So maybe just let's go on first gear. Let's try just first gear. Let's see. Hmm. First gear sounds good. We can do first gear. Number one, number one, number one. We've come further up the road. Not very far. Oh, we had a zebra shouting. Oh, they since stopped. Um, we haven't really come very far up the road, and we've bumped into this massive herd of red hartebeest. This is probably the biggest herd I've seen here. Um, yeah, there is a, a decent amount of them here, and it's bigger than that herd that we saw with the three amigos or that were above the three amigos there's definitely more here and uh, they're breeding they seem to be breeding fairly well i mean we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten plus minus juveniles all of which were born last year also around the same time as the zebra so around November December I think actually the red hartebeest were the first to start their lambing so they may have started uh, sort of October mid-October Some of them sitting down, some of them standing up. Keenan, you can call a breeding herd of hartebeest a harem. Indeed, yes. There also seem to be some pigs. Hmm. My nickname for warthogs is Piggles. There's a fairly big Piggles over there. Goodness gracious. He's got massive tusks. He'll lift his head eventually. But it's very nice to see that all of these animals are living all in harmony. You know, different backgrounds, different species, warthog, zebra and red hearted bears. It all basically comes down to the fact that both of them will fall prey to predators and they know that as they've seen each other running away from such. I hope you guys are not going to move away now. Um, we've just had the zebra. I'm not too sure exactly what they're doing, but they're causing some trouble around the bushes to which the direction that the red hartebeest are now looking at. And I think it's just zebra being zebra, running around like headless chickens, causing a bit of a, uh, a frenzy. I can still see some of them are lying down, so I don't think 
they're too phased about what's going on although there is plenty of attention going in that direction and rightfully so if you're seeing another animal running and well we see other a herd of animals running and jumping over roads and vocalizing you're also going to want to know why what's going on over there Just had some starlings landing there. Glorious G, I couldn't agree with you more. The red hearted beast is a interesting looking animal. You know, with that sloped back, they come across as a, um, what's that uh, mythical creature? A centaur. If, is that right? Half man, half horse. It's almost like they are centaurs, but not quite. And the, they do have these rather snouts. The thin heads, not a very big. Bit interesting looking. If that sloped back, though, that sloped back does help with the running you'll find that the red heart appears the black wildebeest most actually wildebeest will have the sloped backs and the sloped backs is very good for sometimes long distance running and maintaining that long distance right we uh, going to send you up to Cedric who I believe may or may not have found some lions All right, thank you so much. And yes, we are coming to the same area where we had those two black dam male lions. And as you can see, they are still lying next to the water. We are got a view with the drone at the moment and I am making my way into that sighting with our oh, Rusty. You'll see us coming into the area. They are very much flat cut. And uh, and see if we can get Rusty into picture there. There we are. As you can see, there it is. Hey, my boys, all sleeping and not moving anything. All right, so we're gonna just stop here a little bit. There we go. All right, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna then now switch to, there we are, fast asleep. Next to the pan, they haven't moved anything, these two big male lines isn't that stunning the other one is just behind uh, the bush itself so yes how nice is this so they can clearly see they haven't eaten anything last night I think they've just layered during the night time resting they have been injured by other male lions recently but uh, they're just in more recovery mode Ubuntu. I am because we are. A new dawn for the fastest growing continent on the planet. Be part of Africa's Web3 awakening. Ubuntu Token. Launching 29th February 2024. Join the allow list now.
those warthogs you can see there, that sow that is in front of that ball, that's the average size for a warthog. And you can see that ball is massive behind her. So you can see, yo. Oh, I mean, really, that is a huge, huge warthog. There's warthogs all over the place here. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, little baby, you are in our shot. You're in the way of the warthogs. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Don't you stop there. There we go. There we go. Yo, these little babies of photobomb are getting in our shot here. <laughs> As if one wasn't enough, two. I've seen uh, warthogs sometimes get aggressive with other animals before, but only once before. It was it's oh, an, an extreme situation, but it was also impala that the warthog ended up chasing, and not something like a red heart to be us. A red heart to be us is something that would stand its ground, you know, male or female, when they're looking at a small sort of small animal like a warthog. I don't think they they take too much threat from that. We've got a beautiful male standing in front of the herd, almost just to the left, I'm sorry, just to the right from the center with very, very dark markings. Oh, amazing, beautiful, beautiful boy. All right, with that said, we're going to send you back up to Cedric with his lions. Thank you so much. Yes, you can see a beautiful paw, front two paws of uh, this uh, stunning male lion. That he's still almost fast asleep. Well, he is fast asleep. Eyes are closed, still resting. Of course, bearing all those wall scars on his face. Amazing that these two black dam male lions have not moved an inch for three days. Three days around this pan. Very interesting. Well, coming to the third day now. Very interesting. I really thought last night that they were going to move. And they can't stay for too long. They've got to look after the territory. They've got to patrol. But uh, clearly these two male lions have camped out here and said no. Nope. I am not moving nowhere. Annabelle, yes, uh, it is. It's amazing. It's a new perspective the, from the drone. It just it just gives you a, a, a better understanding how the landscape is pretty much laid out, and um, and also where the lines were lying, how they were lying next to this little pan. It's such a stunning, stunning view. And I was, I was, I was, I was loving that view. It really was. Uh, but uh, for now, we are just gonna enjoy it from this side. Oh, a little bit of uh, a little bit of cleaning here. Look at that paw. Look at that front paw. It's like a dinner plate, the size of a dinner plate. Oh, there we go. Hey, hey, so. Nice to see this this metal's head is up. Well today is gonna to be a scorcher of a day, so it's gonna be very hot today. And I don't think these guys are gonna to move too much. Can't uh, they're not gonna to move too far. I think they're gonna just hang around here close to the pan. Maybe find some shade once again. I'm sure they'll be here this afternoon. Unless something comes down to this water hole for a drink, maybe elephants might come down here and chase them. That could be a huge possibility. 
Oh, we can. Or maybe even a buffalo. You can imagine a, an old male buffalo coming into this pen during the daytime. Mm. So the, these two males will take that opportunity to try and bring that one down. But for now, I think they are just, as we say, they're just licking their wounds. Oh, it was about three weeks ago. It was about three weeks ago, maybe two, two, three weeks ago, where they pretty much had that altercation with the Nzenga male lions. Uh, Terence, yeah, they don't, they don't belong to a pride. Uh, they're a coalition, so they are two brothers, and they will be pretty much roaming around together. And now and again, they will join up with a, a, another pride called the Nkuhuma pride, but they don't stay long with them. They'll stay maybe for a day or two. And then that pride will continue, and then these males will also continue with their patrolling of their territory, making sure there's no other males coming in. Uh, and especially that they've been mating with uh, some of the Nkuhuma females. So they've got investment in this area now. So those females have cubs, and if it's their cubs, well, you know, they've got to make sure that uh, this area is protected from other boys. And there has been other males coming through here, like the Kambula males, but apparently those four male lines have gone far south towards Sabi Sabi area. So that is the southern side of the Sabi sand, very far from here. And of course the Nzenga males, but the Nzenga males, we haven't really, we haven't seen the Nzenga males coming onto Juma at all. So I think they're more situated uh, south towards the uh, Mala Mala area. Um, in, yeah, they were pretty much roaming around that side. Two big boys, and that's who these two guys had a confrontation with. That's why they were bearing a few battle wounds from that encounter. Zane, but the Zane, these are the dominant males of this area now. Yeah, they, that's why the Nkuma the females will mate with them. It takes time to get the confidence in the females. You know, they, females won't just like, okay, we're going to start mating. Now, they'll first make sure that these guys are here to stay. I mean, it's pointless mating with these males and then they have cubs and these males aren't here anymore. And then what, those, those cubs are in great danger from other males. So... You know, just first get that confidence in them. And these guys have been roaring, they've been patrolling this area. So, you must, so we've got to accept that these guys are a northern coalition at the moment. And that's why they had that confrontation. Because you know, they, wanted, they wanted to let those other males know as well. Hey, but we are here to stay. We're not going to just give this area up that easily. No, especially that they're about seven years old now, so they're just starting their prime, getting into that prime now. That is beautiful, but look at the beautiful body condition. It would be very nice to see the Nkuma pride coming through the side. It will be amazing. I'm not too sure where they are at the moment. Well, at least we can kickstart the Saturday Cataday with the, the three amigos, the Amakala and uh, the two black damn males. Wonderful.
Annabelle, yeah, well, I'm sure we all hope so. I do. I love these two males. I think they're fantastic. I always say that reminds me of the Mapojos, you know, you've got the one on the left hand side, we usually call him uh, Kinky Tail, bigger mane, like more of a beautiful male. And then you've got the one on the right hand side that's sleeping here. And one of the Mapojos we used to call the one uh, Mr. T. And to me, it was, looking at these two guys almost reminds me of those two males. You can quickly see the difference in the mane. And this one's mane is not as pronounced as the other male. You can see there. And you can see he's just going all the way down his his back. And that mane is still going to grow a little bit more. Still give and take another, say a good another year, year and a half of growth. Totally a fully developed mane. This is On Safari. In this particular case, it looks like he's made a coalition with his sons. I'm sure this afternoon is going to be a fantastic drive, as always. Now remember, this is live and interactive, so we'd love to hear from you. And we're still here with our red heart beast and our warthogs. And uh, nothing much has happened except that our warthogs have just spread themselves out more. Other than that, pretty much the same. They're still doing. However, Mother Nature has decided that she's going to up the level in the windage. And she's increased it by a few knots. It's a pretty nice picture. The red hartebeest. 
some lying down, some standing up, some youngsters, some olders. A fairly good mix. Man, listen, you really, you really must, you really, I must encourage you to come to Amakala. As there's so much to do here. There's so many animals to see and just being in the environment really is a peaceful, a peaceful affair. But it's all down to basically choosing a good lodge. Well, most of the, all the lodges here are fairly good and the rangers know exactly what their task is at hand so you'll be in great hands no matter where you are and hopefully be able to see more than enough animals i noticed that now everyone's sort of starting to get up but there's only one red heart of now lying on the floor and little juvenile everyone else is all standing up now as if they're preparing for something I highly doubt they are but that's what it looks like yes hello Mr. B So I've bunny indeed it is, you know, the, even if there's not very many animals to be seen, there's still the scenery here. And the scenery here at Amakala is unbelievable. It really is. All these mountains and valleys, the erosion beds, the thicket lines. It really does offer an experience. All just chewing a lot of, lot of them are chewing the food that they would have munched on this morning regurgitating it chewing it swallowing it or shall I say regurgitating it chewing it properly and then swallowing it Sandy, there'll be so many nice places where you'll be able to take the perfect photo for an even better, fa a better painting. So many places. And that's the nice thing. I mean, for a photographer, Amakala is the perfect place. You can do all sorts here. You can take pictures of animals. If you're really interested, like really, really interested, you can take pictures of the people. <laughs> um, the shrubbery but mostly the landscape. The landscape photos here will really come out well. If you've timed it at the right time of the day, amazing. We're going to send you back up to Duma for those lions who Cedric is sitting with.
can see beautiful close-up of one of the black dam male lion's eyes. And he's just now gone to sleep next to his brother. Isn't this wonderful? What a beautiful setting. What a beautiful setting. All we need now is uh, Mulwati, the male leopard, to come strolling down the road. I, met him, I remembered, I think it was last year, if I'm not mistaken, where these two boys, these two black dam males, were busy feeding on a warthog. They're just north of Twin Dams, one of the dams on the southern side. And they were busy feeding on a warthog. And then out of nowhere came uh, Mulwati, the male leopard. And there was a little piece of uh, meat that was sitting just not too far from the males. Like you know, a little bit of, I can say, the scraps of the, of the carcass. And the male leopard on Mulwati came in very sneaky, very sneaky. And he kind of grabbed that uh, piece of that carcass and he snuck away without these males even noticing him. I mean, that is the ghost of Juma. He pulled off a magic trick right there. It was quite uh, quite a ride, or quite funny. It was uh, hilarious. Without these guys even knowing that they've lost a piece of their kill. <laughs> uh, that just shows you. And he's sitting at a sighting like this and all of a sudden things can change up very quickly. Yeah, you remember that one, Gwen? Yes, it was. It was very nerve-wracking. We were all on the edges, edge of our seats for that uh, sighting. But yeah, no, he he perfected the the stealth of a leopard. I love that. <laughs> Well, this male is going to, he is looking mighty good. And we saw him, of course, getting up now and started walking. He looks fine. Mm. Annalie, yes, I think it would be nice to listen to these two males start calling. I'm hoping tonight. I was actually hoping that last night, but that did not happen. And we're hoping maybe tonight. So we will definitely we'll come here this afternoon and follow up on them. I can't think I can't think that these males will stay a fourth day around this pan. I mean oh, three days as it is to me, so especially without a kill, is uh it's uh, it's a long time. Look if it was if there was a carcass here, you know, they had a kill, different story, you know. Feed and rest, feed and rest, but uh, there is no carcass here. There's nothing, so. But I think these two males are more in a, like recovery mode. Just to get healthy again. I'm not saying they're not healthy, but just to like recover from their, their wounds, from the altercation that they had with those other males. And that's why it's always so, so important that the bond between the two brothers is strong. That's why they'll lie next to each other like this, always touching that contact. Just to keep the bond strong. So when they do go into battle, they go into battle together. And that is not uh, a scat that's behind him from the lines. And that is elephant and dung that's pretty much situated behind them. You can see little marulas in there, the grass, the twigs. So that is elephant dung. Just in case you're thinking, wow, that is the lion's poo. No, it's not the lion's poo. It's one of those almost as big as the lion.
Tracy, yes, they, I've seen uh, young lions, not the older ones, not these ones, they, you know, they're adults now. But you'll find the younger lions, like the cubs and maybe even the sub-adults, sometimes there's like a, a ball of dung. I've seen them actually knocking it around back and forth, you know, like kind of playing with it, like a ball of uh, wool. You know, the cat or a little kitten pouncing on a, on a ball of wool. And uh, I've seen lions do that with uh, elephant dung, yes. But uh, I don't think these, two, these males are past that stage. What do you hear, my boy? What do you hear? Is it more whitey coming down here? Okay. Well, his tracks is coming into this direction. His tracks is definitely coming into this direction. Look at those eyes. See, he's just scanning. He heard something and he's just scanning the area. Sticulars that's busy alarm calling and next to us there's a high pitched noise. And many times you'll find those little birds when they see a predator, they usually make that
lovely mixed herd of impala. You're going to see these herds starting to fragment in the next month or so. Start seeing our males isolating themselves, pushing other males away, trying to herd the females again. Having only given birth in November, males are going to start getting quite protective, quite owning. So from March onwards it starts becoming very busy on the Impala male front and what has been a high dominance in the Impala lamb mortality up until about now, from March onwards it starts to increase to, to male Impala from a predator point of view. Obviously between September and November, the high height of pregnancy of the females, that's when female impala have a very high mortality rate comparison. All right, so we're just slowly going to start ambling away uh, from the, those lines, but we're going to have a nice little shot here, and uh, just to give you a, a bit of a view on them. But that was nice, having the black dam males. As you can see, slowly going to start moving away from this side. And, uh, well, they're still just resting here. What a morning, what a beautiful morning. As you can see the two male lines are still just resting. And Justin, it is a beautiful view. Now you can see where they're lying, pretty much in the shady little spot there. And they've, they've got uh, the nicer water. Iconic African mammals live large in humanity's imagination. Across the continent, fascinating mammals have evolved to fill every conceivable niche. Their struggles for survival, natural and anthropogenic, mirror those of wildlife the world over. Because they are so beguiling, Africa's mammals have become ambassadors for the Earth's remaining wilderness.